Hello, everybody, and this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I'm very excited because we have a very special guest. His name is Scott Adams. He is the CEO, and he is the founder of Adams Consultant Firm, and he's amazing. And today he wants to talk about how to build your business and, in a sustainable way and how to avoid that burnout and to avoid stress as you're building your business. And he's going to talk about a lot of different things, tools and strategies on how to build your business, how to avoid that burnout, how to avoid stress, and all the things you need in order to have a successful business and to be able to grow in, in a, a way that's going to help you get to the goals and to the, elevate to the levels that you want to be. So Scott, tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do. I'm so excited to have you on the show. Thank yeah. you so much for coming. Likewise, hi, Stacey. Thanks for having me. And one, I should get you to introduce me into every meeting that I have. It's fantastic. So thank you. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, a little bit about me, I'll probably have uh, one of the more interesting career paths that I think a lot of people will ever see. I mean, I started out working in athletic training, worked in pro hockey for the Pittsburgh Penguins for six years, was extremely fortunate in my time there, you know, not only working with the greatest athletes and getting to travel the world, but also, you know, we won a Stanley Cup in 2009. So my name is on the cup. I got to take it home for a day. I experienced that, you know, I've done so many other things with that role from traveling internationally to meeting all kinds of great people along the way. Uh, you know, from there, I transitioned out of hockey into a role in innovation and strategy originally with a company called Exos. Uh, they're one of the world leaders in human performance training. They're, they have a few different divisions, but they're most well known for preparing athletes for the NFL combine. Um, some of the work I did with them is, again, I started in innovation with them and worked on programs and designing uh, programs for the U.S. military, uh, programs for figuring out how to keep uh, soldiers in the U.S. Navy kind of in shape physically while inside of a submarine for weeks to months at a time. Um, yeah. Developed a program for the NFL Players Association for recently retired players called the Trusts, which is still going on today. And got to work with clients such as Google and Intel, IBM and Adidas to work on wellness programs, human performance initiatives, and consulting on innovation projects such as, uh, you know, internet wearables before that was even a thing, right? We, we had those kind of discussions with them. You know, from there, again, and I'm sorry, this gets lengthy uh, being the Reader's Digest version too, but... <laughs> um, from there, worked at Mayo Clinic in, again, strategy and operations, launched a sports medicine uh, division from scratch, uh, was very both financially prosperous in that endeavor, but also from a patient side and staff side, uh, highest satisfaction levels that they've ever seen in both patient satisfaction and staff satisfaction. Uh, in addition there, I also launched a virtual mm -hmm. hospital at Mayo Clinic, which was the first of its kind in the state of Arizona. We got legislature passed through the state Senate to be able to do that. So um, also, you know, many of us dealt with, well, all of us dealt with the COVID and everything that went along with it. So uh, yeah. I led those two divisions through COVID and uh, we got through it okay. And we got our people through it okay. And um, unfortunately I was burnt out after. So I transitioned out of healthcare uh, helped overhaul four different businesses, um, and then you know, kind of ran into health issues myself, which you know we'll talk about burnout as as the conversation goes on. And um, in October, I started my own consulting company. It's I really love solving problems and helping people, and consulting allows me to do both of those things. It also, um, you know, I was always doing that in every role I had, but it wasn't a hundred percent of what I do. So I. Kind of jumped off the deep end with consulting, and uh, here I am today. That's amazing. You have a, like an amazing history. You work with such, you know, influential, you know, corporations, and you work with the, you know, the sports division, and you work with, you know, so many different athletes, and and you know, the organizations itself. So you've really been all over the place. Mayo Clinic. These are very impressive names. All these companies that you've dealt with. So you probably have like a diverse, you know, um, amount of, you know, experience in all different areas. And so when you help people in your firm, are you just, are you focusing on any type of size or you're focusing 
on between startup all the way to corporations or middle size and you know what's your focus yeah my focus is primarily small and medium-sized business and even startups right i tend to have three target audiences one is that accidental ceo i know we've heard about that a lot lately but it's someone who has a passion for what they do and suddenly they decide to make it a business or it's been a business for 10 or 15 years and they have employees and they're kind of in over their head, right? They don't get to spend time working on that passion. They spend all their time managing their business and trying to navigate that. So I'll work with those groups. I'll work with startups, um, which I really love working with startups, helping them kind of navigate and learn from the lessons that I've gone through. Because when I worked at Exos and we were working with companies such as you know Google and Adidas. I mean, we were essentially in, in a startup phase uh, with yeah. the programs that I was a part of. So we learned a lot of lessons that way. And being a small fish dealing with big fish um, yeah. was also very interesting. So being able to leverage those learnings. And then the third are kind of those strategic leaders, director level, senior managers that or leaders that just have a complex problem that they just need a little extra help solving. So I come in and leverage my expertise from all those different areas. And, you know, what I really look to do is transform businesses for the future, uh, mm -hmm. having them ready to be able to be adaptable to our dynamic environment that we have today. But most yeah. importantly, given my experience on, you know, stress and burnout and working crazy hours, like a lot of entrepreneurs do, um, and even business leaders, my goal is also to make it sustainable for the business owner. You know, how can we get their business lined up and scalable into a position where they can also have time to be with their family, enjoy their hobbies and those other priorities along the way? You know, I've seen so many times with, with so many entrepreneurs and so many people that I know, even practices where it comes to doctors and, you know, um, when you have firms and, and so forth, a lot of these people are completely burnt out. They are just, you know, they are, even though they might have a staff of people, they're putting all the pressure on themselves and, you know, they don't get a lot of sleep. They are constantly worrying. Their brain is constantly, it's never stopping. It's consistently thinking about the next thing they got to do. And they go, you know, and then the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. And, you know, emotionally they get burnt out. Mentally they get burnt out. And then, it, you know, you notice that it starts to affect them physically, you know, like from what you've seen in your own, your own experience, you know, what are some things that common problems you see in small and medium sized businesses that people consistently do? Like you may be the, the um, CEOs or the, the managers or the people, the leaders in charge that, you know, that really, you know, burn them out. And then they have a, tr a lot of trouble communicating with the rest of the, the business or pe other people, because they can't focus their clarity's off, you know, because there's so much going on. Are there common problems and common solutions that can be done, you know, for these businesses? Yeah, no, that's a great question. And it's, it's funny because you see, I see the same patterns repeated, whether it's a pro athlete, a physician, a business owner, it's the same thing, right? Part of it is going too fast for too long, right? You need to be able to scale back, right? If you think about it, um, you have so much energy in a day, right? So if you have 100 points in energy in a day, you have to deal with everything. That includes eating, you know, taking yeah. care of yourself, your family, commuting, all of those things, right? Yeah. And you also have work on top of that. So one is even though your job is something that maybe you identify with, yeah. your priority is still not your job. Your priority is your family and yourself. So one is those priorities get jumbled around and it, it, the proportion of what you spend on each kind of get off kilter. The second yeah. thing I see a lot of, especially with business owners, is they overcomplicate things. Mm -hmm. And this is where sometimes an outside set of eyes can really help um, yeah. because things have been, you know, especially in a startup or a small business, what you do or you tend to do is a problem arises, you just want to fix it. And yeah. it's a short-term fix for a short-term problem. But the problem is the short-term fixes add up over time. And right. then suddenly something that was on track is now way off track. Um, right. You know, I wrote about this recently in uh, Atomic Habits with James Clear talks about this, the 1% improvement pattern. And even if you're off 1% every day, how 
how far off that's going to be over time. So, you know, an airplane that's one degree off course for a five hour flight is going to be 25 miles away from its destination. So nowhere near the airport in the middle of nowhere. And it's the same with these businesses and business owners where you're just trying to patch the problems and then you're way off course. And then, you know, you don't know how to come back to neutral or get you back to where you should be. So, you know, I see those those two problems. The third problem too is something that contributes, I think, to burnout and stress is that imposter syndrome. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I was really shocked the amount that I saw it working with pro athletes um, in my time there. Here they are, they're the greatest, most skilled, hardest working athletes in the world, but they still have moments when they don't believe in themselves. And I think that's same with business owners, you know, being able to believe in your abilities, your project, and even being able to ask for help uh, is something that we see. So, you know, all of those wrapped up together, your priorities, your direction, and being able to ask for help are three things that I consistently see. Yeah. And those are good points too, because I think that happens a lot, you know, and, and I think people really have to, you know, as business owners too, you know, they, they, um, they put on a persona because they have to, they have to put on that strong, you know, leadership, you know, individual that knows what they're doing and inside there might, there's a lot of complicated problems and issues going on. And sometimes people are afraid to ask for help and they feel like it, it lessens them as a person that they're not as good as they, they should be if they go outside the box and they ask for help. And, and the, and one of the things I think is most important is that they do, you know, I think everyone should have, you know, a consultant or, or a coach or somebody they could reach out to and, and go for guidance because, especially if you have a, a thriving business and you're struggling to make ends meet, because I've seen so many businesses where they're thriving, they're getting business, but by the time their expenses, by the time everything, you know, gets subtracted, you know, they're just making ends meet, you know, even with all the sales they're making, you know, and you see that a lot also, and that stresses people out and, and they just, you know, they keep looking at what they're doing. And sometimes it's really hard when you're inside the box to see where those flaws are and to see where those mistakes are, are and, and, you know, the possible solutions that could fix the whole problem, you know, because sometimes you need an outside source to kind of look inside and, you know, give you ideas that are unbiased, I think. Yeah, that's absolutely true. And I mean, I take the examples from my previous history, right? Look at um, pro athletes and teams, right? Players have coaches that they can reference for how do I get better? What am I missing? Show me what I'm doing right. Show me what I'm doing wrong, right? right. Working with a company such as Google, they're the first to admit that they're not the experts in everything, right? That's why they brought us in help in the human performance space. And at the right. same time, you know, you have to have that safety zone, right? You're asking your, your coach or consultant for help. There needs to be that safety zone where, hey, you can make a mistake. And that's okay, right? We can, the goal The goal of a mistake is to learn from it. And that's one of the first lessons that I learned working with Google is one of the first projects we had, and I don't remember the exact project, but we nailed it, right? They had a problem, we solved it, we made no mistakes. Like I thought, oh great, here we are, small company, we did a fantastic job. They were upset with us, you know? <laughs> because we didn't make a mistake. So they're like, well, we didn't learn anything new. And that's what we were hoping to do. Like, sure, you solved our one problem, but we didn't learn more information to address, say, two other issues along the way. So, you know, that gets, that's winded in. So you're, you're mentioning of, yes, every business should have a consultant. Every pro athlete has coaches, right? Companies yeah. such as Google are seeking consultants because they know they're not the experts. And when I come in and work with a business, I'm not going to be the expert in your business in particular, right? But I right. know and I've seen enough and I can draw on my experience to ask those questions, maybe challenge your beliefs a little bit, form a strategic framework that you probably haven't thought about before um, and solve some of these problems and just provide that other set of lens, you know? The business is still the hero in the journey, and I'm just the guide to help you there. So, you know, let me help you guide you. I'm not going to, I'm not threatening by any means coming in. I always say to people, I'm probably one of the least threatening consultants because I know this is your business. Mm -hmm. You know, this is your passion. Some people, it's their life's work. And I just want to help you make that better for yourself and everybody else. Right.
I, you know, I, I think a lot of times too, sometimes people are having problems in their business and they, they don't even know what the problem is. They, they know that things are, are going, you know, in, in a wrong direction. It's not, a, you know, things aren't happening the way they anticipated it, but they don't know exactly what the problem is. And, you know, they, they're looking at all these different aspects, but they just don't know you know, what needs to be done to fix these problems, you know, for those people, like, what are some of the things that, you know, suggestions that you can make to people who have small and medium sized businesses that are struggling in, in certain areas, but they're not really sure how things should be structured. They're not really sure what the actual problem is. You know, do you have some tips and tools that you could, you know, maybe give to them to help them on their way, like to be able to see things in a clear aspect? Yeah, you know, I think number one, like you already said, just hire a consultant, right? They're experts in facilitating that change and having those conversations with you for those that aren't positioned to. The three things that I always like to make sure a business has is one, um, and I draw upon this from my exponential organizations framework, is a massive transformative purpose. Mm -hmm. You know, some companies have mission statements, but this is more than a mission statement. You know, it's Stacy, why are you doing this? Like, what are you trying to impact? Is to have right. that. The other would be your three and 10 year vision of your business. Mm -hmm. And once you have those three elements in a line, all of your decision making should be centered around does it check the box for all three of those? Yes. Right? Because that way you're going to keep on that same path. You're not going to bite at the latest and greatest or let's put out this fire by doing this differently you're going to get away from that going off course method. And it's going to provide kind of that North star or that North end of the compass for you to follow on your business and your decision-making. And then the last one is continue to look at your process. Uh, I know it's super boring to think about process and business process, and you might look at it a thousand times and say, I can't do this any differently, but I would challenge you to challenge yourself to take a look again, you know, a lot of companies that I've worked for and worked with say the two same things that drive me crazy. Well, we've always done it this way, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, you've been in business for 20, 25 years. You've always done this this way. But people in technology have changed greatly in 25 years. There has to be something that we can improve upon. Um, yes. And the other thing I hear all the time is it's not broken, so why fix it, right? <laughs> Again, that's a great mentality, but at some point, that car that you've had for 20 years is going to break. You can only put yeah. so many miles on it. So mm -hmm. challenge those two beliefs, right? And again, right. it's not even a massive change sometimes, but um, you know, I worked with a call center before that we found something that saved them 30 seconds every time they booked, they, changed, they made an appointment, right? They were scheduling yeah. appointments. Over the course of year, this saved them that one little change that put 30 seconds to 10 seconds, yeah. right? Resulted in 2000 hours of save time and almost $200,000 a year in operational costs. And again, wow. that's a minor change. So you think about a business that's been going for 20, 25 years that hasn't changed anything, or yes. you're a startup and you're trying to figure out your path. Uh, when resources are tight, especially in small businesses, those little changes can make a big, big difference. Yes, yes. You know, I, I've seen that too. And, and you know, it's, it, people are like, well, I don't have the money to spend. But then if you do spend the money and you do invest in your business, uh, those people can actually fix those problems. And before you know it, you could actually 10 extra business, you know, yeah. and, you know, just in a short period of time, because, you know, I believe if you really want something, you'll be willing to find that money. You know, if you really want to accomplish it, yeah. you know, it's always a way to, to get that money to invest. And if you could have a, a consulted agency come in, actually revamp things and and make things more efficiently so you could you know not have you save all those hours and you can put them towards something else and then like you said take all that stress and all you know all all the the that those feelings of, of burnout that you're experiencing that you're starting to feel and you're able to actually have a clear mind and focus on the future those three years from now those 10 years from now and then everything else is starting to make money 
you know, it, it's like a, it's, it's like a dream come true, you know, and, and I think that's what small businesses have to realize is that it's worth the investment. It's worth it because, you know, they will get you on track. So you could actually start really building your business and not having to, you know, to put so much energy and time into it because you, at some point, once that consultant's firm shows you how to do it, you could actually start hiring people because you'll start to get income in and you'll be able to afford those employees and you'll be able to afford to grow. And once you start growing, you have other people working with you with, and with one common goal, you know, in mind, you know, magic could actually happen. I think, don't you think? Yeah, absolutely. And I'm glad you mentioned that. You know, whenever I work with businesses, I do that same prescription, right? I work to 10x the business, right? Let's design mm -hmm. to 10x it because, and that's a whole topic for another day, right? But 10xing mm -hmm. a business is easier than 2xing a business, right. right? And I know that's a challenging thought, but when you think about the decision process and how you're building towards scale, yeah, you're going to make it easier and make 10 times more money. And I always look at consultants as, it's like compounding interest, right? Yeah. You're going to pay me once or you're going to pay me as a fractional COO, a retainer for a monthly fee, whatever that is, right? Yeah. But if I fix a problem this year, that's going to benefit you for five years, 10 years, 20 years down the road. So right. like you had just mentioned, those thousands now turn into tens of thousands and the tens of thousands turn into hundred thousands. So mm -hmm. that investment you're making up front is small when you look at that bigger term picture. And yeah. I ask business owners all the time as well. And I ask myself the same question is, Stacy, what would you pay if I can give you back 10 hours a week? Right. right. So how, mu how much would that benefit your life if I gave you 10 hours a week that you can do and use however you want, that you don't have to worry about the business, right? A yeah. lot of people will say that's invaluable. I yes. would pay you whatever I can for that because that would make a big difference because now I can pick my kids up at school. You know, yeah. I can, you know, go out an extra night. I could see friends. I can go golfing. I can do all these things that I haven't been able to do in years. And just like you said, like those, that initial investment, yes, it can be challenging for a small business. It might be a hard pill to swallow right away, but you're going to, you're going to get a return on that every time. And even yeah. if you just get your money back, it's worth it. But I promise you, uh, you'll get way more than your money back. Uh, in that investment. And I think one thing too, people have to realize that there's only 24 hours in a day. And I know from my own experience, when I started my business, you know, I could only do so much in 24 hours by myself. But once I had like a consultant firm come in, once I had coaches come in and they started pointing out different things for me to do and how to change this and how to change that, I started making revenue and I used that revenue to hire people. And then I got all this free time back. And then I actually was getting, you know, triple and quadruple the amount of work done that I couldn't do myself. And because, you know, once you start to make money in a business, then it's like you can only make so much money unless you grow. And the only way to grow is to be able to, you know, to listen to a consultant firm, to have a coach, to, to incorporate all these people into your business and they show you how to grow. And then once they show you how to grow, that income is coming in, you could hire people and then you're doing less work and you're focusing on the things that really matter for your business. And the other people are working on the things that are helping you become bigger and bigger. And then before you know it, that that small amount of money you were making or that X amount of money you were making all of a sudden, you know, gets 10x very easily and like you said it is easier to 10x something than it is to 2x something where people might not get that maybe you can explain to them but it definitely is 100 percent. yeah it becomes a question of who not how anymore right yeah. it's uh mm -hmm. it, you know you work you work with business owners that again that that passionate owner that starts out with a certain you know i i they have a restaurant right they love to cook not cook. They're they're chefs, right? They love to create. Yes. And yeah. but part of that process, they're creating, but then they got to worry about staffing and supply chain and how do my PLs look and you know where's my marketing going? Who am I marketing to? All of a sudden they're not a they're not a chef anymore, right? They're yeah. running a business. So that that point of the consultant being able to get you back into what your passion is then ignites that fire back. So it starts to 
diminish what maybe burnout is occurring and lights that that fire again and gets that passion going but to the point on like the like you just said the 10x method of developing versus the 2x right is mm -hmm. you're making decisions to scale for the future right yes. so i'm going to put implement policies or people now that can help get me there so that i don't have to work as hard right because if you're right. trying to achieve the 10x that goes back to my strategy of developing that purpose and the three and 10 year plan yeah is if you're making all your decisions based on hey i'm going to take my revenue from you know 10,000 to 100,000 or 100,000 to a million Mm -hmm. Your decisions you're going to make to your point and in investing in things versus plugging problems yes. is, is how you get to that scale. And that's how you grow 10x. And that's how you do it without working as much. Yeah. Um, and it's like you're working like a dog if you're trying to get to 2x because all of your decisions are made on just double it. Well, what happens next year? Well, mm -hmm. I got a 2x at 2x. So now yeah. I got to work hard again. Now all of a sudden you're working four times harder to achieve that growth versus scaling it the right way and the sustainable way, which is kind of the background and you're well-versed in it too. It's as a coach, it's like, let's focus on these priorities. Let's look at every expense you make as an investment versus an expense, yes. right? Exactly. And, and again, it's bringing in the right people too and trusting them to, to kind of do what their, their role and, Again, if you have that vision and alignment, then your decision making follows that process and it makes you makes it easier and it gives you that insight and frame of mind to make those decisions the right way. Yes. Oh, I agree 100 percent. I think it's, it's really important for people to to be able to do that because you want to be able you know, people go into businesses because, well, most people, a lot of people, because they have a passion. And they really want to make a change, you know, whether they want to, like you said, be a chef and be creative and show their their artwork of food to the world and want people to taste it and enjoy it, whether you are in the in a business to help other individuals, you know, and what mentally, physically, spiritually, whatever the reason may be, or just help them, you know, become a success, you know, you, you go in there with a passion. And the only way to to make that passion grow is, is to have people, you know, um, you know, working with you and and helping you also because you you know if you do try to do everything by yourself you're just not it's not going to happen yeah. and that's why you see so many businesses and on sad very sadly they fail within the first year and why do they fail yeah. because they're they're trying to do everything themselves and it's just virtually impossible yeah it is and um we have one of the greatest innovations of all time right in front of us right now you know artificial intelligence Mm -hmm. is at the forefront. I've spent a lot of time the last six months getting skilled and certified and building custom AI interfaces and such like yeah. that on my own, because to that exact point, like you can't, as a solopreneur or as an entrepreneur in a small team, you don't have the time in the day, but you can leverage tools such as artificial intelligence right. to really scale yourself and scale your people. And yes. I know there's a lot of fear and there's pros and cons and there's things you got to look out for with everything, you know, AI mm -hmm. is no different, but yes. I've seen AI since day one as not a tool to replace people, but it's a tool to help people expand what they can do, right? Exactly. You can use AI to help generate a hundred ideas in three seconds or less, right? Mm -hmm. How long would it take me as a business owner to generate a hundred marketing ideas, right? Yes. I would spend a whole week or two trying to generate a hundred, right? Yeah. But instead you can leverage AI and I do this too with companies and sprints, right? We can, in the course of a week, develop a whole new campaign or a whole new way of looking at things, leveraging your team, myself and AI together to really yes. just help. It's an accelerator for ideas. And then we take those ideas and hash out, ooh, I like this one. I don't like that one. Okay, well, why do we like this one, right? right. And it helps you work faster, especially as a small business. Um, and I've been working more and more with, and again, I don't, fully develop AI solutions, but how to inject AI into your business process is yeah. huge. And small businesses can be the biggest, can gain the biggest advantages in using AI compared to a large company, because again, they can scale some of these things that take them longer to do. I'm, I'm not a pro in marketing myself, right? Mm -hmm. So I've developed my own chief marketing officer that I basically converse with back and forth to come yeah. up with these ideas and these solutions to really help 
uh, right. in an area that maybe I'm not the best at, right? But yes. um, it's it's a tool that everyone should be looking into and um, again, seek help to understand how to get there. Yeah, oh, 100%, 100%. I think AI is a really good tool if you use it the right way. You know, some people abuse it, but if you use it the right way, it can be very beneficial for a business owner, even with um, imagery and, and creating social imagery for, for the social yeah. networks. You know, they come up with such great ideas, you know, and you know, it's just, you can use it in numerous ways. And like you said, to create ideas and to be able to, you know, get you, you know, on the right path to help you with outlines if you're creating something and you just, you're trying to think of how, okay, what should I do? Should I, you know, begin, you know, the presentation like this or like this and, you know, AI can come in and, and give you an outline and, and then you could work from there and create that presentation, you know, but it, it, it is, it's, it's a great tool tool. I think, it, you know, if it's used the proper way, it could really help a lot of small and medium sized businesses for sure. Yeah. And also, you you know, as an entrepreneur, sometimes it's a lonely life, right? Especially when you're working with yourself or a small company, you don't have someone to always turn to, right? We right. all, you know, most of us have developed great relationships with people. Um, you know, you have many relationships with people that you can bounce ideas off of. I have the same, but Sometimes you, you need something to bounce an idea off right away and AI yeah. can kind of help you to leverage that idea too. But again, it's not a solution to take away from human interaction. It's just a facilitator. Right. And right. again, that that can be accomplished uh, that way. And again, those are the small things sometimes of integrating a little bit of that into your business that could yeah. save you those 10 hours a week. Um, oh, yeah. And, and some of the things that business owners don't like to do because it's not their passion it can cut down the time it takes for them to do those tasks. So again, ways to make it more sustainable and scalable at the same time are are win-win solutions. Oh, a hundred percent. Like I'd like to tap in for a second to talk about, you know, um, to talk about burnout and to talk about stress, because that's something that is so prevalent in almost every business. I don't know one business owner or entrepreneur that doesn't go through, you know, burnout or stress, you know, some, you know, some people go through it and then they learn the signs and they, they automatically stop themselves or they readjust the way they're thinking and doing things before it actually gets bad. And sometimes people who are not really familiar with burnout, they just keep working and working and all of a sudden they hit that that plateau and they just, you know, it's just, they get hit like a, like a hard rock and, you know, it could be, it could be really, you know, dangerous too, you know, and it could be also a hurtful to your business. And like I always say, I said it on, on hundreds of, of, of podcasts that 70% of illnesses are caused by stress, you know, and, and people have to realize that when you're under stress, you're just knocking away your immune system and you're saying, come on in, I'm all here free for you, you know? And it's like, you know, if you want to be a successful business owner, you have to be have a, a clear mind, clear head. You have to be strong and you have to be able to think clearly and, and focus. And, you know, what are some of the things that you see in, in your from your own experience about burnout and about stress from your, your own clients and people you work with? And maybe you can, you know, implement some solutions to help people with these problems. Yeah, you know, I think, again, everyone's unique, right? So there's there's a lot of different ways to do it. And you're right, everyone everyone gets stressed, especially in the business world. I mean, even, uh, you know, those that own yoga studios, right? The, the <laughs> kind of the center of the peaceful, mindful, you know, yeah. namaste world are still stressed, right? And you would think they have exceptional tools to handle that stress, but that's not always the case. Right. You know, the one thing and you talked about earlier as a business owner, again, there's not enough time in a day, right? So you can, and I'm a checklist person, right? I got checklists every day that I have to go through. And yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm going to pull from my own experience. It's, you know, getting through that checklist every day, you don't have to, right? right. Because, you know, much like, again, drawing back from my time in, in pro sports, you know, you're not going to be good tomorrow if you're exhausted today. Exactly. And the one thing that athletes are really good at, some better than most, but it's they're getting better and better every year with technology and the amount of staff to help them is recovery. Mm -hmm. And recovery is vital for them being able to perform every day. Uh, oh, yeah. You know, I'm a big baseball fan. I even played semi-professional baseball kind of growing up and I love it. Um, despite working in hockey, which I love too. And I mean, I love all sports and seeing people operate, whether it's a business owner, or an athlete at the top of their game is just 
something fantastic to watch, right? Yeah. But baseball players play every day. So when you talk about mental and physical, they need to be able to reset every single day. So you need to be able to turn the page. And yeah. living in sports, again, you your, your job and your life are wins and losses, right? Outcomes are all that matters. And in business, again, when you're trying to run your own business, you need profit, right? That's a win and a loss. So mm -hmm. outcomes matter, but you can't really control the outcomes, right? Yeah. All you can do is have your process in the right spot and work hard and recover. And then those outcomes will take care of themselves. If those other things are lined up, they should, right? So the one thing that I find is you need to model athletes. You need to be able to turn the page. Okay, today was a loss. Maybe I didn't get everything done I wanted. Maybe we had a bad client experience, a bad presentation. Yeah. That was today. Tomorrow is a different day, right? right? You can be on a winning streak. You can be on a losing streak. These are all ebbs and flows. But at the yeah. end of the year, things are going to work out, right? So being able to be rested at the end of every day and ready to go the next day is key. So turning that page is one of the biggest things that I will say. Um, and again, it's it's hard when you're in the weeds of day to day, you know, life is the same, right? With whether it's relationships, things going on, parenting, you're going to have wins and losses and you just, you just need to realize you're going to lose some and you're going to win some. And there's going to be times where you're losing a lot there's going to be times when you're winning a lot and none of those last long on either of those streaks. I mean, pro sports is a great, a great microcosm for everything else. Look at someone's schedule and look at their wins and losses. Right. Um, right. You usually don't win too many in a row. You don't usually lose too many. In a row. So you just, you need to have that about you um, and prioritize, right? It's the same in today's life with a business owner. It's the same in the athletes. You know, what do I do? What priorities do I need to take care of today in my business? But yeah. most importantly, what other priorities do I need to take care of, right? How do I balance that mix of work and life and make it sustainable, right? right. If working out is important to you, doing yoga, spending time with your children or family, those need to be prioritized. And sometimes yes. work needs to take the back burner because you need to have that balance. Yes. Uh, I, I fell into that and I still try not to today, but I'm one of those people that I think like you are, right? We're head down workers. Like I have my checklist. I need to get this done today, regardless of how long it takes, how hard it is. I need to do that. But that just leads to burnout, yes. right? I need to be able to say, hey, I've done what I can today with this. I need to take care of my other priorities, which are always going to be more important than work. Let's be honest. Mm -hmm. Even when you're running a business, health, family, friends, Right. Come before work every time. So let's prioritize those a little bit more. And I think people will really be, and I know it's hard, right? I know it's hard because you want to get that next client or am I doing enough to like market myself, right? You are, you know, you are, but you're going to be no good to anybody if you're burnt out and stressed. So that balance is, is essential recovery and balance. Yeah. Oh, for sure. That's great advice. You know, because I, I, you know, I, I even do that. I, I create a to-do list, you know, and then I create the checklist of, you know, what I've accomplished. And you know what? I don't always finish that checklist that, you know, that to-do list that I create, but I yeah. give myself an award and a pat up on the back at the end of the day, because, you know, I got quite a bit done. Or even if I get a couple of things done because it took a lot longer than I expected, I still reward myself somehow because, you know, you have yeah. to you know, not, not knock yourself. You have to really give yourself credit because you tried, you know, and I think that's what people have to really understand is that, you know, it, it's, it's good to just, you know, be able to reward yourself at the end of the day and, and not be so hard on yourself and just look at the positive, like, wow, I got these things done. I don't have to worry about them today. They're done. And tomorrow's a new day. Yeah. Yeah. And that reminds me of two things. Thank you for kind of mentioning that is with the checklist too, you know, it's really amazing is that whatever I don't get done today, I can move on to tomorrow's checklist, right? Yes. It doesn't mm -hmm. vanish. It's still fine, right? It's yeah. okay if it's on tomorrow. So um, that's one thing that I've learned, like, oh, yeah, it can move. Um, the other is you've made a good point, right? You got to celebrate those wins, right? Mm -hmm. Even if they're small. And this is something I'm terrible at. And I think, you know, the expectations, um, again, in pro sports is that example at all you know you're expected to win right right you're expected right. to win every single year 
But as you know, in every sport, one out of 30, one out of 32 wins every year. So there's one happy camper and 31 miserable people. So (laughs) you need to celebrate those moments. And and that's the same in life and in business. And it doesn't have to be a big moment to be celebrated. So take that time. And again, I'm probably one of the worst people to speak to this because I'm one of the worst people at celebrating good moments. And, um, but take that time. It doesn't have to, it doesn't have to be a big celebration, but just acknowledge the stuff that you've done well and acknowledge the victories that you have because you deserve it and you've earned it. So enjoy it. hundred percent. I love that. (laughs) Now, if you had to take everything we talked about today and you wanted to summarize it into a couple of things that you think are really important that you'd like to emphasize to the listeners, what are some things that you really would like to, you know, really throw out the listeners and make them, you know, make them understand? Yeah, I think um, you can, you can have balance. It's possible to have a successful business and have that balance and sustainability. Um, that's the one thing I'll I'll say to everybody is that's definitely achievable. Uh, two would be, you know, seek help. Right? It's anything. Right? Whether it, you know, w- mental health is important. Right? Physical health is important. Your business health is important. Seek help. You can't be the master of everything. Yeah. Find those that'll help guide you to where you want to be and help steer you in the right direction when things get off course. Um, third, again, I, life is this way, business is this way, but quit making it so complicated, right? Yeah. We all have a tendency to overcomplicate things. And yes. I'm going to say, especially in business, and this is this is something that, you know, I'm good at is making thing, complex things simple. So. Yes. Do that in your business. How can you make things easier in your life? How can you make things easier? Um, yes. It's making those small adjustments. And again, your time is the most valuable thing you have, whether it's with your kids and your family or yourself. And yeah. so anything you can do to improve the time that you can get back, do it. And I think getting that outside help and prioritizing things will help you get there. And again, that'll lead you to sustainability. That'll limit your um sensitivity to burnout and it'll increase your passion and hopefully be more fulfilling and and happier life that way oh 100 percent. i agree with you totally those are great points to make and tell everybody about the different services that you provide yeah i provide a range of services so i'll do everything from a complete business transformation to um, fractional coo roles to hey i have a single problem i just really need help Right. So Mm -hmm. I do a lot of those. So what I like to do with all businesses is make sure they're aligned strategically, make sure everyone is informed of those values, because you would even be surprised how many organizations do a great job of coming up with a, you know, a purpose and values, but they don't live them. Right. So it kind of gets falled on deaf ears. So um, providing that that strategic alignment for the company providing that kind of 10x vision and aligning those business plans and then providing a path to that scalable, sustainable growth is what I like to do most. Um, So that's the services I bring. Again, I'm working for whoever it is that brings me in, the business owner, the leader. My role is to solve your problem, make it more sustainable for your business and scalable and Mm -hmm. give you time back in your day. Yeah, and that's so important. I think people... That's the one thing that people regret is that they get so Im- immersed in their business that time goes by so quickly. And before you know it, you've missed out on so many important things. And then that regret comes later on. You know, just if, if yeah. you can, get, like you said, we, we've talked about it a couple of times in this conversation. If you can get back X amount of hours a week, you know, it, it's so important to just be able to, you know, spend it, you know, with the people you care about the most, to, you know, to do the things you can't normally do, you know, now you can do it. So what do you want to do with that time? You know, and yeah. that's so important. I think, I think that's a really good point is, is that people have, you know, time goes by quick. And if you can get that 10 extra hours a week, you know, use it and, and use it for something that's really important, you know, whether you, if you want to use it to business or you want to just use it with your family and make those memories, you know, it's, it's yeah. so important to be able to have that extra time. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. It's again, it's, you can do it. It's possible, right? I've helped others. I've seen others do it. 
Um, still working it on myself, but I've gained hours back too. So, I mean, whatever your situation is, even if you feel like I've exhausted everything, this is probably the best I can make it. Even again, like I, we talked about earlier, even a 1% change can yes. have that compounding interest and make a big difference over time. So there is always something that can be improved in yourself and in your business. 100%. Now, where can people find you? Yeah, the easiest place is probably adamsconsultingfirm.com. Um, I have my contact information there. Free consultations are available. Again, I'd love to talk, learn more about business and how people are looking to get help. Because again, every business and every person is different, right? What you're looking to gain out of your business and for yourself is going to be completely different than somebody else. So the nice part about being more of a boutique kind of consulting firm is I'm not going to come in with a cookie cutter solution, right? I'm going to work something custom and draw from the multiple frameworks that I like to work from to create something that's special for you and will solve your problem. You know, I'm available on LinkedIn, you know, Scott Adams, but I have a pretty common name. So that's sometimes more challenging. So um, <laughs> start with Adams Consulting Firm. My LinkedIn is available there as well. Wonderful. Oh my God. This has been amazing, Scott. Thank you so much for coming on the show, sharing all this wonderful advice. I think this is something that everybody can use in, in their life because, you know, when it comes, if you are a business owner, if you are an entrepreneur, you know, these are things that everybody is hit with. And, you know, and especially when it comes to burnout and stress, you know, these are things you want to avoid. And by having a business that is actually flowing and doing well, you know, you could actually, you know, really maintain your, your mental, physical, spiritual, and, and you can also prosper at the same time. And to be able to, you know, be in line with yourself is so important. So, you know, all this advice you gave today was amazing. I thank you so much for coming on the show. You've been a whirlwind of advice and I, you know, you're just great. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you, Stacey. It's been an honor to be a part of your podcast. And again, like you just said, I hope Hopefully people take some uh, tidbits out of this and make their lives better. So thank you. Oh, you're very welcome. You have a great day. You too. Thank you. Bye now. Bye-bye.